Rigging has a very long history in Kenya. In the early years, it was mainly limited to parliamentary seats and councillor seats. There was no need to rig a presidential election because there was no presidential contest throughout the Kenyatta uh, administration. Yeah, there was no competition, therefore there was no presidential contest. And most of the Moi years, yeah, most of the years when Daniel Arap Moi was at the helm as president of Kenya. All this changed in 1991, when after intense international pressure, the country returned to multi-party politics. Indeed, many analysts that year did not see how Moi was going to be able to get through this challenge, because during his own long political career, he had never had a challenge. Moi was a school teacher in the 50s, until his own people came to him and convinced him and persuaded him to go into politics. And so they ensured that he was unchallenged during those early years. When he became vice president, of course he used his influence and remained unchallenged. And then of course he took over pres the presidency after the death of uh, Kenya's first president, Mr. Jomo Kenyatta. So really, he had had no challenge, either on a constituency level or he had actually not had any serious election challenge at any level. And here he was at the highest level as a president, facing an election with a very strong opposition. To make matters worse, that strong opposition had a lot of support from various foreign powers, various Western countries, who saw Kenya's problems uh, as something that could very easily be solved with the Moy out of the way. And so in 1991, it really looked like Moy was cornered. To make matters worse, the opposition made no secret of what their intentions were. Immediately they had removed Moy from power. Lawyers like Paul Muite prepared uh, a case against the president, which they said they would rush to court immediately after voting him out of office. The writing was clearly on the wall for Moy. If he lost that election, he would not only lose an election, but he would end up in jail, probably for the rest of his life. And even before the elections, the numbers were clear for everybody to see. Yeah, everybody had ganged up against Moy, and it seemed that the only support Moy had was from his own Kalenjin community. The rest of the country was firmly behind the opposition. This included the biggest tribes in the country like the Kikuyu, the Luo, and so on and so forth. Moy used the services of his uh, think tanks. My, informa my information is that he actually had more than one think tank. Yeah which uh, was able to look for a way forward for him. And he found it by dividing the opposition uh, through various covert uh, means and uh, using the information he had, the immense information he had on the individuals in the opposition to ensure that the unity broke. He managed to break this unity and uh, when he went to the election, that was still not enough for him to get back to office. And so that poll was desperately rigged, and so Mo, and so Moy winning, and landing back in office to the shock of very many. Okay, and that was how the rigging in the presidential elections was born. In the following years, it was to thrive and grow, and become very sophisticated, and become less uh, messy than that first rigged election of 19, that first rigged presidential election of 1992. To understand how presidential elections work in Kenya, there's one very important point that one must grasp. And that is the fact that since the country returned to multi-party politics in 1991, there has never been a free and fair presidential election, bar one, except only one, the one that happened in 2002. And that's the time Moy was leaving power, and uh, that is the only election that was free and fair. And, and the aftermath of those elections emphasizes this further. There were no court cases, there was no challenge, there was no uh, complaints of rigging. It was just a free and fair election. Now various methods have been used to fix uh, these elections and uh, most of them have been fine-tuned from what was developed by Mo himself in 1992. Now this information is rather sensitive but you'll find all of it in my book uh, on 20, 2017 elections. This is what is said to happen. 
In that book I have a chapter where I give you a background of what has happened in the past and it gives great detail about exactly how elections are normally fixed. Yeah, You can get a copy of the book. Uh, of course, Club 1999 members already have a copy, but anybody can get a copy of the e-book. It costs only 399 shillings. Okay, All you have to do is use that number you see on the screen, send them pesos of 399, I will send you the e-book. And what is more, I'll also give you free membership, one month membership to my Club 1999. Okay. That is a golden club. There are two kinds of uh, club 1999. There's the platinum lower level, which is minimal access, minimal services. And then there's the golden club 1999, unlimited access, unlimited information, ebooks, uh, videos, daily analysis. Okay? I will give you that for free for one month if you purchase this book at only 399. Okay? If you're outside the country, you can pay Paul. To that email address you see there, you miss this at gmail.com, you pay for three dollars and ninety-nine cents only. Yeah, and you'll be able to have access to this. Thank you very much for your time. This is Chris Kumekuja.